All right, hi everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on common mycotoxins in foods and feeds. We're excited to have you here with us. My name is Jessica, and I'm the Director of Marketing at Amtech. I'll be moderating today's webinar. Just so you all know, today's webinar will be recorded and posted on Amtech's YouTube channel if you ever want to come back to it. First off, we encourage everyone to participate by asking questions throughout today's presentation. You can submit questions by clicking on Q&A at the bottom of your screen, and we will stay on after the presentation to go over all the questions that came through. To start off, for those of you who don't know, Amtech is an accredited laboratory in the San Francisco Bay Area specializing in food safety testing and special research projects such as shelf life, challenge, validation, and spoilage investigation studies. Amtech also just opened two new laboratories in Modesto and Salinas, California to better serve our clients. So if you know you or anyone you know is looking for superior service in the Central Valley or Salinas Valley, please do not hesitate to reach out. Today's webinar will be led by Amtech's president, Dr. Florence Wu. Florence earned her PhD in mycology and has extensive experience in mycotoxin detection and analytical method development, food safety sampling strategies, and microbial contamination control. So with that, let's get started, Florence. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for the introduction and welcome everyone. Uh, let me start the presentation. Today's topic is common mycotoxins in food and the feet. So as you may know, mycotoxins are serious concern in food safety. They are not merely a subject of scientific inquiry. They are tangible threat to our food supply of livestock and ultimately to our own health. Understanding mycotoxins is very important for, from food safety standpoint. In the next 30 minutes or so, I will first introduce the definition of mycotoxins and select a few representatives to discuss the occurrence and the source of mycotoxins, their impact on food safety and health, and regulations regarding mycotoxin limit. Then I will into introduce a couple of methods for mycotoxin detection and analysis. First off, what is mycotoxin? The word myco is related to fungi. Toxin means harmful compound. So by definition, mycotoxin is a secondary metabolite produced by certain types of fungi that is harmful to humans or other animals. As you know, mold are most common fungi that can grow in environment and on food. Growth of some mold often produces extra substance called secondary metabolites. The word secondary indicated that these compounds are not essential for the survival of fungi. Famous example of secondary metabolites are penicillin and other antibiotics that saved many millions of lives. Mycotoxin are also secondary metabolites produced by fungi. But unlike antibiotics, that are, they are toxic to human and animals. When these mycotoxins get into our food or our surroundings, they can make us sick, causing range of illness we call mycotoxin causes. Mycotoxins appear in food chain as a result of mold infection of crops, both before and after harvest. Exposure to mycotoxins can happen either directly from eating infected food or indirectly from animal that feed on contaminated feed, for example, from milk. Mycotoxin producing fungi belong to several genera and different fungi produce different type of mycotoxins. Aspergillus is one of the most common mycotoxin producer, penicillin, fusarium. We will talk more about these three genera. For now, 
I'd like to sp spend a little bit more time on Claviceps purpura. This is a fungus that produces a group of mycotoxin known as agot alkaloid, which can have toxin effect on humans and animals when ingested in contaminated grains. And th there are two forms of agotism. One is characterized by symptoms as a muscle spanism, seizures, and hallucinations. The symptoms of other forms include a severe restriction leading to reduced blood flow and tissue necrosis. This results in the loss of finger, toes, and other body parts. If you see one of the historical pictures, the shows how people suffer from this particular mycotoxin. Stachypotry is, is a fungus that produces mycotoxins such as stachypotry sin A, sexual toxin, and, and a whole bunch of other mycotoxins. This fun fungus is offer, often referred as black mold because of its dark green or black appearance. It can grow on building materials such as drywall, gypsum board, paper, and wood when there's excessive moisture or water damage. And this is why it is frequently found in buildings with water damage. Another genera is autonomous species. This group of fungi can produce different kinds of mycotoxin and they can often found on foods such as fruits and vegetables. Today's main focus is the top three genera. From mycotoxin perspective, there are several hundreds of different mycotoxins has been identified, but most commonly observed mycotoxins represent a concern for human health and livestock. And that include alpha toxin, alkyl toxin, xerolending, fumonescence, dung, T2 and H2 toxins, petulin, and citrinin. Due to the time limit today, let's focus on four mycotoxins in this group. First is alpha toxin, and then we'll talk about alkyl toxin, we'll talk about dung and petulin. Alpha toxin, a group of highly toxic mycotoxins produced by specific mold, primarily Aspergillus flavus and Aspergillus parasiticus. There are two types, there are several types of alpha toxin, and the most significant ones are B1. This is the most potent and carcinogenic of all alpha toxins, and B2. G1, G2, M1, and M2. Alpha toxins are commonly found in crops and food products that are successful to mold growth, such as peanuts and the peanuts products, or corn and corn products, cotton seed, nuts, other nuts, spices, milk, and dairy products. Alpha toxins are nutrients for their important carcinogenicity and a significant health risk to humans and animals. Alpha toxin B1 is classified as group one carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. Prolonged exposure to alpha toxin B1 through contaminated food can increase risk of liver cancer. High dose of alpha toxins can also lead to acute alpha toxin causes, characterized by symptoms like vomiting, pain, and in severe cases can cause um, death. Chron chronic exposure to lower level of alpha toxin over time can lead to a range of health issues, including impaired growth in children, immunosuppression, and an increased risk of liver disease. According to the World Health Organization, alpha toxins are responsible for an estimated 25,000 to 150,000 of liver cancer annually worldwide. This type of cancer is often fatal. 
Many countries have established regulatory limit of alpha toxin levels in food and feed products to pr protect public health. This limit vary depending on the type of the product and its intended use. For example, for food and nuts, the FDA alpha toxin action limit is 20 ppb, except for milk, where the action level is when microtoxin M1 it exceeds 0 0.5 ppb. For animal feed, the FDA action levels are dependent on the crops and animal. For example, the action level for corn and peanut products intended for feedlot beef cattle is alpha toxin level 300 ppb. While the action level for animal feed and ingredients intended for immature animals is 20 ppb. Now let go, let's go to alcotoxin. Alcotoxin is a macrotoxin produced by several species of a mold, with the most significant producer being alpha aspergillus alcrasils and penicillin verrucosum. There are primarily two types of alcotoxin of concern. One is alcotoxin A. This is the most commonly found and studied type of alcotoxin and alcotoxin B, which is also produced by some mold and can be found alongside of alcotoxin A. Alcotoxins can contaminate a variety of food and beverage products, including cereals such as wheat, barley, oats, and rye. Coffee beans, especially during the processing stage, can be susceptible to alcotoxin contamination and grapes can become contaminated by alcotoxins, which may be transferred to wine during the winemaking process. Some spices, particularly chili pepper, paprika, black pepper, have been found to contain alcotoxin. Most of alcotoxin health effects are concentrated on studying alcotoxin A. So alcotoxin A has been linked to kidney damage and is considered a potent nephrotoxin. Long-term exposure to alcotoxin A through contaminated food or beverages can lead to kidney disease. Alcotoxin is classified as possibly carcinogenic to humans and particularly due to its associate with, association, association, sorry about that, association with kidney cancer. Alcotoxin exposure has also been associated with immunosuppression and potential harmful effects on the nervous, on the nerve system. Because of their health effect, their regulatory limits for alcotoxin A and it also depends on the countries and the type of product and its intended use. Here shows example from European Union. Regulations on alcotoxin food and feed are established by the European commissions. For alcotoxin A in roasted coffee beans and ground roast coffee, the level is five ppb. For alcotoxin A in wine is two ppb and alcotoxin grape juice or grape nectar for final consumer is 2 ppb, but alcotoxin A in processed cereal-based food for infant and young children, the limit is 0 0.5 ppb. For other products or product derived or processed from unprocessed cereals, the limit is 3 ppb. Pytulin is a toxic chemical compound produced by different type of mold, especially those belong to the, gen the genus of penicillin, the genus of aspergillus, and other couple genera. For example, penicillin expansum is a common pytulin producer. Structure-wise, pytulin is a white crystalline solid compound. It can be found in variety of foods, particularly fruits, such as apples and their products like apple juice or cider, 
uh, pears, cherries, and grapes. Consumption of petroleum-contaminated food can lead to symptoms as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and pain. Chronic exposure to petroleum may weaken the immune system, making individuals more susceptible to infections. Petroleum can also damage genetic material such as DNA, which can increase the risk of cancer. Petroleum is classified as potential carcinogen with long-term exposure potentially increase the risk of cancer. And because of this, there are regular limits for uh, petroleum. In the United States, petroleum and apple juice or apple juice concentrate is 50 ppb. And European Union and Codex also have their definition of regulatory limit for petroleum. Now, the last example I want to give today is dung. This dung is produced by various species of zarum fungi, primarily fazarum graminarum and fazarum culumorum. It is a type B trichotoxin. Trichotoxin is a big family of mycotoxin, and dung is one of the one of its type. Dung contaminate typically um, in cereals grains, especially under condition of high humidity and temperature during crop growth and storage. Fosarium species grows very fast, and they can infect the plants flowering has and the toxin can accumulate in the kernels. Moldy or visibly damaged grains are high, uh, and a higher risk of dung contamination. The primary mode of dung the health effect is by the inhibition of protein synthesis by binding to the ribosomes, which disrupt the normal cellular process. And the symptoms can include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abnormal pain, headache, and dizziness. And chronic um, long time exposure to dung can lead to immune system suppression, reproductive tissues damage, and even death in extreme ca cases. And because of that, there are regulatory limits for dung in food and feed. And that's also very big by country and, and the region. Here are some examples of the limit, but this limit may change in recent years. Or, so it is crucial to refer to the latest regulation in your specific area for the most up-to-date information. In, in EU, dung in unprocessed the cereals and cereal products, the limit is 1,250 1, ppb. But in processed cereal-based food for infant and young children is 200 ppb. And in other food product, the limits varies, including like 750 ppb for certain processed cereal products. In the United States, FDA has established guidance level for dung in various food and feed. These are not legally binding, but are used as reference for regulatory action. For example, dung in finished weight products for human consumption is 1,000 PVB. In finished weight product for animal feed is 5,000 PVB. Codex also have their uh, limits on mycotoxin level specifically the dung in, in cereal and a cereal related product. So why we want to test for mycotoxin? I think the reason is obvious uh, because of the health effect and because the they can contaminate and, and often do contaminate the food and feed. But some reasons more obvious than others. For example, for the safety and animal health. And mycotoxin are tested because they are adverse health effect. 
as we mentioned earlier. And regular, te regular testing how food and feed producers meet the legal requirement due to the presence of regulatory limit. Mycotoxin contamination can affect the quality of the food and feed, leading to changes in taste, appearance, and nutrition, nutritional value. By testing for mycotoxin, producers can maintain and monitor the quality of their product, ensuring that they meet the consumer expectations. Mycotoxin contamination can lead to significant economic losses in food and feed industry. Contaminated product may need to be discarded or downgraded, and the producer may face legal action or damage to their reputation. Regular testing helps identify and manage mycotoxin issues before they result in significant financial losses. Mycotoxin contaminated food can be harmful to livestock. They can lead to reduce the growth rate, lower milk production, and other health problems in animals. Testing feed for mycotoxin is crucial to protect livestock health and agriculture industry. And finally, testing can help identify the source of mycotoxin contamination allowing producers to take creative actions to prevent future occurrence. So how mycotoxin is tested? There are, there are several different methods. And here I'd like to just briefly talk about two methods. One is high performance liquid chromatography. The principle of HPLC is separate mycotoxin based on their chemical properties and the detectors measure the, the concentration of individual mycotoxin in sample. The advantage of HPLC is it has high sensitivity and specificity and capable of analyzing multiple mycotoxins simultaneously and is widely used in research and regulatory testing. The limitation is this method requires expensive equipment and a trained personnel and is time consuming. Another commonly used method is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. Uh, briefly, it is an ELISA method. It relies on antibodies that specifically bind to mycotoxins. The resulting color change is quantified to determine the mycotoxin level. The advantage of this method is it's rapid, it's relatively simple and cost effective, and there are available kits for on-site testing as well. The limitation is may this method may have cross activity with structurally similar compounds and may be less specific to, than the HPLC method. I just want to prove, briefly mention how to prevent and control mycotoxin. Um, there, there were different measures food companies can use to mitigate mycotoxin contamination. For example, the proper storage conditions which control the temperature and humidity to prevent the mold growth. And regularly monitoring and testing the crops and products for mycotoxin level is also very helpful. We must adopt good agricultural practice in order to reduce mold growth in the field. And when available, use a mycotoxin related crop varieties for production. Finally, post harvest processing methods such as shorting, cleaning, and mycotoxin removing techniques are also helpful in prevent mycotoxin contamination. The key to control Mycotoxin is to control the mold growth, both in pre-harvest and post-harvest stages. In summary, mycotoxin are natural toxins produced by certain mold that can contaminate food and the feed products. Mycotoxins can be 
chemically stable and may withstand normal food processing method, but removal or degrade, degrade technologies are available. Mycotoxins pose significant health risks to humans and animals when ingested or exposed to. Regulatory limits for mycotoxin vary by country and region and subject to ongoing research and updates based on scientific data. So thank you for listening. Now we are going to stop recording and open for questions.